What's going on everybody? Sean Daniel here with Guitar Control. Today we're going to talk about maybe extending a little bit of your knowledge about where single notes are that you can play over specific chords. Major chords are going to be what we're going to be talking about today. All right. So click the link below because I'm going to chart out each of the chords we're talking about and then relative to those chords, a little bit of a tab that you can kind of always really associate with these chords. Chords you already know in the key of G, G major, C major, and D major. Okay, we're gonna play them two different ways. These are gonna be open, and then bar chord. But it's not really about playing the chords, it's about knowing the notes that you can play along with these chords, okay? So we're gonna think of these as extensions of chords, all right? So, like this, just an example of kind of like what we're talking about. We're gonna be playing a chord, and then going into maybe like a lick or riff based system that we're gonna add in addition to that chord, all right? And the great thing is, this isn't only about just knowing like a G major or a C major or a D major. This is gonna be any single time you see a root note of where you're playing, you can always see these as really easy uh, extensions, all right? So first, what we need to do, we need to have one chord, G major, just like this. Middle finger, third fret of the E string, pointer finger, second fret of the A string, open D, open G, open B, third fret of the high E string. There's that open chord. And then we're gonna have four notes that we're gonna add to this, okay? Now, the four notes we're gonna choose are gonna look like this. Just on the A and D strings, the fifth fret to the seventh fret, and the fifth fret to the seventh fret. So it's almost kind of this little, uh, this box shape. Right, just two frets away. Could not be easier. Literally, it could not be easier, right? Now, every time you see this chord, or really any major chord, I want you to look at where your root note is, right? So the, the G in the G major chord is the third fret. Now, down a string, down two frets, is where this little four note box starts. Okay, so let's just make that connection first, and then we're gonna talk a little bit later about how we can kinda, you know, make it a little bit fancier, all right? Again, this is just one voicing of a G major chord. Another one you can do is bar chord, right? This works on acoustic or electric guitar, for sure. Maybe if you're playing electric guitar, you might wanna play more bar chords, doesn't even matter. Uh, you can do the same thing on an acoustic guitar, but if we bar the third fret, we have your ring finger on the fifth fret of the A string, pinky, fifth fret on the D string, middle finger, fourth fret on the G string. We can play all six, or if you don't want to bar it, if you just want to get this shape, you can just do it like this, where I'm actually not even holding the B and E strings. I'm doing this to kind of make it a little bit easier on my hand. The nice thing about this shape, even if you go with the, the open chord, is we can visualize where that box starts. There's the fifth fret on the A string, right? Now we can slide into it. The important thing about adding these four notes to this chord, and again, the four notes that we actually are playing here are D and an E, fifth fret on the A string is D, and seventh fret is an E, and then a G and an A, okay? So D, E, G, A. A couple of those notes are already in this chord, and that's why they sound good together, they're in the same scale, okay? Now we can be, we can see this is adding other notes to this chord, just like that, right? Or you can see this as an extension of the chord. So the first kind of riff that we're gonna make is we're just gonna go straight up this four note. We can even almost think of this as like a super tiny mini scale, right? We're gonna play all four notes in order. Five, A, seven, A, five, D, seven, D, back to five, D. Again, the notes would be D, E, G, A, G. There's the chord. There's the riff. Now when you do it in the bar chord way, again, your ring finger is on the fifth fret. We can just slide. It doesn't matter really how you play it. It's all in context of where you're going, where you're coming from. But anytime you play a chord with a root note here, you can start thinking of this little box and know that it's always gonna be available to you. So that way, instead of maybe it's like a, really easy song, you're just kind of jamming along with somebody. It's like, all right, just, you know, hold hold the line on a G, right? Instead of just playing over and over again, you can always be like, all right, anytime I want to, I can go to any of these notes. And 
I can play them in any order. I go backwards, forward, okay? No matter how you do it, it's really just making these connections. Root note, eh? and then starting to kind of like branch off from that chord and kind of seeing the whole thing in your mind's eye as one one kind of piece, right? So let's do the same thing with other chords that go with the G chord, like maybe like C major, right? So where is the root note on a C major chord? Well, see, so usually on a guitar, it's the lowest note that you play, the bass note. Not always, that's why it's good to know the names of the notes, but it just so happens the third fret on the A string is a C. So just like we said before, we have a root note, you go down two frets, down a string, or down a string, down two frets. Order of operations, not totally important right here. And we end up with the fifth fret on the D string. So let's make that little box again. And these are gonna be the notes that for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna associate with the C chord. Just like with the G, it started on the fifth fret of the A string with the C since G is root note, C is just down a string, that whole little box just moves down a string. So you notice they even share two notes, the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the D string. So we already know these two notes as being a G and an A. Now the new ones we're gonna add right here is gonna be a C and a D. So just by having these two chords and then attaching that one box to each of them, we're actually kind of making this little new, you know, three string, two frets each kind of scale. And then all this stuff is gonna be fair game for either of these chords. So you can play them open chord wise, like we did in the first part, then switch, C, G bar chord, C bar chord. Again, when you root a bar chord, a major bar chord on the A string, the shape is a little bit different. It's just, there's a root note just like it was in the open chord position, but now when you're pulling your finger is the root note, it's just the fifth fret on the D string, G string, B string, if you can manage it. Some people like playing it like this. I'm a fan of playing it with two fingers, either like this or this. And then if you can get the high E string, you know, third fret, hey, more power to you. Congratulations, well done on that. But you don't even need to. You can play these as power chords. 3A, 5D, 5G. This is a C power chord. It is neither major nor minor. That's what a power chord is. But we can still use those four notes to supplement that power chord, whether it's major or minor, right? It's just we just see this root note, and now we're attaching things, and then the possibilities of what we can do really kind of, you know, expand exponentially. Instead of just playing these two chords, now we have these chords. And then a little spot that you can go to any single time, all right? So we would be remiss if we talked about a G chord and a C chord and we're thinking the key of G without adding everybody's favorite D major, five chord, G, A, B, C, D, right? So we have G chord is one, B, C, G, A, B, C, C is four, and G is five. So this is a one, four, five progression and really, it, everything still applies, okay? Now, if we take this C power chord like we did, that's on the tab that I'm sure you downloaded by click, clicking that link below. Move that two frets higher. The fifth fret, as we already talked about, uh, is a D. Fifth fret on the A string is a D. So, there's our root note. Down a string, down two frets. There's our four note little kind of box shape here that we're gonna add to a D chord. We can even, add this to the open D chord, right? So this is a farther kind of journey that you're taking because we have this open D chord and then we have this D power chord or D major bar chord. There's the difference. But I'm still kind of zoning in on the seventh fret of the D string, seven to nine, seven to nine. Now this note right here would be an A. This would be a B. The seventh fret on the G string would be a D. And this is an E, okay? Again, not super essential to know all the names of the notes that you're playing, but it is really helpful uh, when it comes down to more advanced stuff. So, so I just like kind of talking about it a little bit. But now we have three chords, G, C, 
D. And then we also have these three little spots that we can kind of add to those chords, all right? So really just kind of move around to your heart's desire. And then really you can also think of, instead of three separate boxes, as I like to kind of think of them, maybe one extended. And then you can start getting into like some really cool riffs and licks just by running around these things right here. So in fact, again, if I'm thinking, we started thinking about these as three separate spots, right? We start on the fifth fret of the A string. The highest note that we get to is the one that we've associated with the D chord, which is the ninth fret of the G string. So we can kind of run through all of them just by going there. 5A, 7A, 5D, 7D, 9D, 7G, 9G. All right, that's gonna work with any of these chords. G, C, D, G. Now that wasn't a very musical example of what we're talking about, but I think it's a kind of important thing to practice because you really kind of get good at maybe just shredding through uh, these licks and making them a little bit faster, seeing where they come from. I'm a big fan of just kind of focusing in on little pieces of the, fret of the fretboard and then just dominating these six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the octave two of where, you know, we started. So they're not actually six different notes, but they're different locations, All right? So again, I think this is a cool thing to always think of uh, wherever you're rooting any kind of major chord, uh, like the examples that we've used today, always just think of like where that power chord starts. Again, when I say like where the power chord starts, it's like, all right, if this is my root note, a power chord, I'm gonna go down a string down two frets. It's the fifth of a note. One, two, three, four, five. That's where that little four thing riff box that we've you know been talking about occurs. Okay. So no matter what you're in, this is just an example in the key of G. We can do anything. We can do it in B flat. Always gonna fit, no matter where you are. You can even do them um, multiple notes at the same time. Let's go back to that G, all right? With five A, seven A, five D. Instead of playing them one at a time, we can combine them as chords. I'm double stopping through them. I'm barring the fifth fret and of the A string and the D string. You kind of get there. So basically, that's what we got for you. I really think it's a fun thing to practice. It kind of just spices up maybe some chords that you could be getting a little a little stale. But uh, definitely check this out. Let us know what you think. Let us know what your feedback is, other stuff you'd like to see. Uh, it's always good to hear from y'all. And while you're here, make sure to check out other videos around here by myself and other great guitar instructors. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.